inquiry oriented learning uh, is uh, one of many different active learning strategies and they go by all sorts of different names but ultimately it's it's about students taking charge of their own learning and being heavily involved in their own learning uh, rather than the teacher or the instructor purely telling the student what they should be doing at every moment during a learning experience the student is inherently involved in the design of that activity themselves. The advantages for teachers are that we generate students that are actually much more capable of developing critical thinking skills, of problem, problem solving, uh, of asking questions that are meaningful, of thinking about what they're doing in a much more active way. And there are tensions around that because students often just want validation or verification. And we're not suggesting for a minute that we would throw all of those procedural validation verification practice out the window but certainly for uh, for getting students to engage as active uh, researchers particularly at first year and then somehow scaffolding that through second and third year is a really good start. The students can find this kind of learning experience pretty confronting. Uh, students tend to think that there's always a right answer for something and there's always a very right way to be in the classroom and the right way to be learning. That's not what we think. We think that it should be far more open-ended than that. And so there's, there's a shift that students have to accept in their minds that sometimes the learning environment is a little bit chaotic. It's not completely ordered. Um, but that's when some of the best learning takes place. Well, working with our teaching teams is a really important part of what we do. And certainly the instructors in our labs are demonstrators, at what we call our teaching associates. It's uh, more problematic because it's much easier just to validate something, to follow a set of instructions to generate a data set. But when students have to design elements of the prac and think about what they're actually doing, they're asking more difficult and challenging questions of our teaching associates. So bringing them on board and providing them with the training, um, asking them about what their experience was as an undergraduate science student, uh, and to get them thinking about the sort of approaches we want to inculcate is a really important part of the process. The impetus for the inquiry program uh, in sciences was, um, well the catalyst for it, was a fellowship that uh, Professor Les Kirkup at the University of Technology Sydney uh, gained from the OLT probably three years ago. Uh, and Les's fellowship was around inquiry oriented learning. It was around looking at what was happening, trying to generate some momentum uh, in the sciences and we came on board at that stage. He ran a workshop here in science um, for um, academics uh, in science and also for some of our colleagues in biomedical sciences. And Chris and I organised a forum uh, there and got a bunch of people together. And we did one of Les's inquiry experiments. And it was kind of unnerving as an academic to be a student again. Uh, but it was also really exciting because we saw the potential um, of these sorts of uh, learning experiences, not just for us as educators, but for also for our students. The Faculty of Science were really um, accepting of this, of this will to change what it is that we've been doing. And there are, there are a few drivers, I think, that, that we saw and that the faculty saw as well. And the first being that with the Australian curriculum rolling out, not just in sciences, but across all of the subjects and disciplines taught throughout um, primary and secondary education, that inquiry is actually a cornerstone of what we are now doing at all levels of education. Um, we've also seen the threshold learning outcomes being drafted for tertiary education for just about every discipline. Once again, inquiry, an absolute cornerstone of these new uh, educational guidelines in, in, in some ways. So the drivers are there. Um, and so I think the faculty was happy just to have a couple of people who were happy to jump in the deep end and go for it. Inquiry oriented learning is, is one of these learning strategies that fits into a, a suite of different what we call active learning strategies where the student is an active participant in that, in that learning experience. It might be problem based learning, inquiry based learning, there are all sorts of different acronyms but the key is that the student is actively involved in the design and the questioning and the hypothesising of that learning activity. I think inquiry based learning or inquiry oriented learning has a broad application, not just in science, but in a range of other disciplines. 
particularly things like engineering, law, uh, the arts. Uh, I can't imagine that there's not a scenario, a discipline that can't use elements of inquiry. It's really about asking questions. It's really about the way that students think. It's ways of thinking. It's encouraging, encouraging students to think about what they know and reflect on that and then integrate new forms of knowledge or understanding. So I can imagine you, you could apply this across a range of disciplines just by redeveloping the sorts of practice or tweaking the sorts of practice that are currently or learning experiences that students are engaged in. We developed a suite of different uh, learning activities throughout the sciences and we actually came together as a team from biology, from chemistry and also collaborated with physics and designed a template to roll out what we were calling the idea experiments uh, in our disciplines. But students were actually doing an idea experiment in one subject, coming across to a complete a complete different discipline and doing an idea experiment there as well. And what we saw was students making connections between this process of inquiry, not as being something that's purely about chemistry, it's actually a way that we approach science in general. And that goes beyond science. This could be applied to uh, medicine or biomedical sciences, engineering and those, those, those types of areas as well. So one of the truly innovative elements of this inquiry approach was the interdisciplinary nature of what we did. Quite often researchers, educators work in their silo, really not having uh, conversations with colleagues in other disciplines either due to time constraints or competition or whatever. But being education focused academics, we were able to get together and say, well, 80% of the students who are doing biology are also doing chemistry. Let's align their learning experience, but let's also evaluate that learning experience. Let's survey them. Let's ask them the questions about that inquiry approach. What was different about it? What was challenging about it? Let's bring the teaching associates on that pathway too, because if our students are going to be better equipped for this, we need to better equip our, our mm. teaching associates. So interdisciplinary has been fantastic, and you know, talking about it, publishing on it, you know, we get rewarded for that as well, or at least feel good about it. So inquiry hasn't revolutionised what we do in First Year Bio. It's provided our students with other learning opportunities opportunities to act like scientists uh, really do in the real world. The next challenge for us is around assessment, but also to scaffold inquiry across second and third year. Uh, so that working with our colleagues and in the biological sciences, many of our students go on to the biomeds, you know, microbiology, developmental biology, physiology, immunology, pharmacology, etc. So working with those colleagues to introduce the template, the ideas template, around these inquiry pracs so that we can further enhance, um, further scaffold student learning across the degree, not just in first year.